Hello and welcome back to Cranky Cast. We are continuing on our adventure today with Tyranny. Uh, I think we just conquered the Bastard City, so we're starting from there. Uh, we'll just get right into it then. <clears throat> the Bastard City settled into a new state of normalcy, with every tower displaying Kairos' banner. Your name was whispered alongside rumors of a decorated career to come. The armies divided into two fronts and migrated south. Tunan sent word that you were to join the next frontier of Kairos' con con conquest. Either as a judge and overseer of the settlement of Lethian's crossing, or as a war advisor to the armies advancing into the realm of Apex. <clears throat> So I can do Apex, which is the troops of, troops of the mountain realm of Apex stood idle in the safety of their valley, biding their time as their neighborhood neighbors in the bastard tier fell. In the second year of, of war, a joint force of the disfavored and Scor Scarlet Quarus crossed over the mountains to take control of the tier's, tier's central valley, or Lethian's Crossing. Deposits of iron made the settlement of Lethian's Crossing a strategic war asset. Cairo sent the forge, the forge-bound smith mages of exceptional skill. That was a weird sentence. To establish a flow, flow of weaponry, Tunan the adjudicator sent one of his fate binders to ensure the enforcement of Kairos' law. All right, so I can either become a judge or a war advisor. Let's go with the war advisor advancing into the realms of Apex. Four twenty nine TR, the year two of Kairos's conquest. The mountain nation of Apex, ruled for generations by the queens of House Vendurian, stood at the heart of the tears. No army could bypass the landlocked realm without leaving their flank exposed to attack. By the second year of the war, the disfavored and scarlet chorus had pushed deep into the tears. Elements of both armies were dispatched to conquer Apex. Tunan assigned you to accompany them, tasked with bringing Kairos' law to the territory, as well as keeping an eye on both armies. It looks like I get two choices. The Battle of Edgerin Pass? The Archon of Stone's assault was perhaps too su successful. I don't know what that means. Denial of strength, a new school of mages presented problems and opportunities. I do not know what the Archon of Stone's Assault was. Interesting. But I think I'm going to go with that over the mages. Ah, maybe this will tell me. The Disfavored sent their most destructive ally to crush Edgering Fort. Kaarn, Archon of Stone, buried the stronghold under an avalanche triggered from the surrounding mountains. The Scarlet, Scarlet Quarus were promised captured enemies for recruitment, yet none survived the onslaught. The Quarus demanded compensation. Side with the Scarlet, Scarlet Quarus or side with the Disfavored? I'm going to side with the Scarlet Quarus. You upheld the Scarlet Chorus's claim and demanded the youngest disfavored scouts join the chorus to settle the debt. Okay. In the aftermath of your ruling, the main force of both armies turned out to witness disfavored scouts conscripted into the Scarlet Chorus, a rarity of which few could recall any precedent. Archon, Archon Graven Ash, through vocal 
Though vocal in his earlier opposition, held his dignity and shed only silent tears for his lost soldiers. Okay. The scarlet mob swarmed round the new recruits, hoisting them up and tearing at their disfavored raiments, and began a hazing ritual that lasted through the night. Two more choices. The marriage bed armistice. A local custom of tears created strife between Kairos' army and Sword of the Fallen. Scarlet Chorus's soldiers were found wearing disfavored armor. Uh oh. See, I don't want to really punish my people. Um, let's see what this one does then. The army readied for a peacetime festival as Kairos's. Oh no, I'm sorry. The enemy readied for a peacetime festival as Kairos's forces armed for battle. The disfavored paid no mind to the southern custom and planned to attack the Vendrian forces during their annual celebration. The Scarlet Chorus insisted on a day of non-violence. As a former tearsman, many could grasp the decency of a temporary reprieve. reprieve. So I can side with the disfavored, or I can side with the Scarlet Chorus. And you already know I'm going to side with the Scarlet Chorus. Also, like I said before, I'm going to try to side with more protecting people that are weak as opposed to just senseless violence. So if I have the chance to let peasants have a day of non-violence, because that's their long custom or whatever, I'm probably going to let them do that if they agree to like give me something or whatever. Or help me out with some kind of plan or whatever. You offered the locals their last feast, sending a few Scarlet Chorus agents into the mix in good faith. The army hoped that the jester would foster an air of partnership for the occupation to come. And that's what I'm looking for. The festivities went off as expected and the Scarlet Chorus recruits you sent to enjoy themselves reported little animosity among the revelers. The disfavored protested your ruling as too merciful and waged all-night training drills to combat the so sound of celebration with an anath anathem of sword and shields. You sent forces to attack the following day, a battle from which the disfavored recused themselves out of protest. And the fall of Apex. With the defeat... With the defeat of Apex as an inevitable, inevitable, I can't say that, inevitability, the armies of Kairos met to discuss how to put an end to the stage of the conquest. Both armies agreed to send an offer of parley. Along with their acceptance, the enemy requested that you appear at the meeting. Word of your fair dealings had apparently spread to their ranks. How did you orchestrate the surrender? Of the realm of Apex. I can negotiate surrender. Or I can challenge the queen. That seems weird. I would think that the disfavored would. Challenge the queen. And the Scarlet Chorus would. Negotiate surrender. Hmm. I guess I'm going to challenge the queen, though. I don't know. I, Even though I want to go with the Scarlet Chorus, I do want to do things through um, diplomacy and intelligent conversation and stuff more than just brute force though so I think I'm gonna have to go with negotiating the surrender through days of days of mediation you negotiated the surrender of the valley to Kairos's forces putting an end to further bloodshed your former enemies were loath to part with their lands 
but they were even more reluctant to continue a war they were losing at every turn. The Tearsmen are a stubborn lot, and despite their grim situation, it still took days of discussion and diplomacy to show them the madness of tenacity. On the third day of med mediation, the rules of Apex finally, finally submit to your terms of surrender, putting an end to the war in the valley and freeing up Kairos' forces to march deeper into the tears. Alright, so I got three choices to pick from here, it looks like. The land of Apex finally rested in the hands of Kairos' forces. The Scar Scarlet Chorus paused to revel in victory while the disfavored prepared for the next fight affording themselves but an evening's rest. Kairos' armies radi radiated out from the conquered citadel and worked their way across the tiers. The disfavored and scarlet chorus aimed to dominate as much territory as possible in the coming year. Your distinguished reputation in Kairos' military left the choice, left the choice of your nest, next destination yours to make. I can go with Stalwart, with its easily defended position and rich military tradition. The realm of Star Stalwart was the most formidable realm in the tiers. Or the Velm, Velm Citadel. Kairos' conquering gaze fell upon the Velm Citadel, its treasures, its knowledge, its secrets. Or Azure, Kairos' dispatched the Archon of Stone to subjugate the na nation of Azure. Hmm. I think I'm going to go with the military stalwart. The realm of Stalwart was best known for its proud army, for its proud army, disciplined, courageous, and undefeated on their home soil. Skill and resolve made Stalwart a military power that Kairos' forces approached with due caution. With its southern position, Stalwart had been largely safe from war, watching for two years as, as its neighbors fell to Kairos' forces. On the dawn of the third year of the war, Kairos' forces were finally poised to invade the Stalwart Peninsula and subdue the Tyr's most vaunted army. So I can march on the enemy. And... Let's see what we got here. I can choose marching on the enemy. The stalwart defenders burned their crops as they retreated, leaving the invaders little to forage. Starving, the Scarlet Chorus mob raided from the disfavored's well-maintained supply line, incurring casualties on both sides. So, turn it into a little bit of infighting there. After our contentious setback, after a defeat at the hands of enemy defenders, the Scarlet Chorus accused the Disfavored of recklessness. The Disfavored claimed the Scarlet Chorus brought too few soldiers to cover their flanks. Both armies refused to march until you give a ruling. Um... I think I'm going to do the supplies thing and tell the disfavored to share their supplies with the Scarlet Chorus. By your command, the disfavored shared their provisions. The thieves each lost a hand for their treachery. Scarlet Chorus commanders argued that the Horde was starving. Being the largest, largest of Kairos' armies, they were also the the least provisioned. 
The men were wrong to steal, but the disfavored were equally wrong to withhold supplies from their allies. You agreed with the chorus's version of events and ordered that the disfavored supplies be shared. The thieves themselves would be punished with a loss of a hand and returned to the front lines. The disfavored found this a sickening aberration of justice and surrendered their supplies with grudging acceptance. Alright, so two more choices. The Beasts of Stalwart and the Better Dead Than Red. I can go with the Beast of Stalwart, which is the Scarlet Chorus Mages discovered a spell to turn the Beastmen slaves against their handlers. The army prepared to deploy this tactic elsewhere, but the dis disfavored protested. The use of unsanctuated, unsanctioned magical practices ran contrary to Kairos' law, and the beastmen were considered too erratic to be reply, relied on, even as shock troops. Yeah, I don't like that one. Better dead than red. Rather than submit to the Scarlet Chorus conscription, conquered locals began committing suicide. Desperate to add more bodies to the horde, the Scarlet Chorus demanded a portion of the disfavored prisoners. The disfavored denied the right of recruitment, as the realm's population had taken a steep decline. I think I'm going to take their slaves. I'm going to grant the disfavored slaves to the Scarlet Chorus. You re refused the disfavored's request and allowed the Scarlet Chorus to continue recruitment. Additionally, you ordered the disfavored camp slaves to be given to the Chorus to make up for the losses suffered. There was no need to coddle the Tearsmen. If stalwart lacked in peasants to work their fields, then families would be re relocated to other parts of Kairos' empire. The details weren't important. All that mattered was bringing the war to a close in a decisive victory at any cost. To recompense the Scarlet Chorus their losses and to punish the disfavored for their short-sightedness, you ordered a score of slaves conscripted into the ranks of Kairos' military. The disfavored didn't appreciate losing good haulers to the Scarlet Chorus, but you argued that no one was telling them how to conduct their war. Hmm. The Edict of Storms The disfavored carved a slow, steady path into the heart of Stalwart and surrounded the enemy's massive fortresses. With the main bulk of their forces defeated, the enemy leadership retreated to, the, to their mighty fortress, content to wait out the war. The Overlord answered this impudence with an Edict of Storms on the peninsula, a devastating spell that would endure for as long as the cowardly hearts of Stalwart's leaders persisted in beating. Knowing before anyone else that the Edict would occur, the voices of Nurat lobbied for you to deliver the mighty incantation. Aside from being given a three-day window to read the Edict, you received no other instructions. So the Edict of Storm, I can give no warning, or I can warn the people. And in my template of going for more compassionate and um, maybe not compassionate, but at least giving them a chance, I'm going to go ahead and warn them. In an attempt to ingratiate themselves with the people of Stalwart, the Scarlet, Scarlet Chorus insisted that warnings be sent to the towns and villages, so that the people may prepare for the horror about to descend on them. Kairos' wrath was intended for the cowardly regents of Stalwart, not to those unfortunates swept up in the calamity of their leadership. A warning in advance of the spell would give the locals time to prepare for the devastation to come. You were content to let punishment fall on the innocent... Oh, 
Okay, you are content to let punishment fall on the innocent as lightly as Kairos' will allows. Comforted that you might yet spare lives, you broke the seal of Kairos' Edict of Storms and read the Overlord's incantation. Look at that city boil! The Edict of Storms. The clear skies darkened as you read the final words of the Edict. A flurry of wind and rain whipped through the rolling plains and craggy canyons, turning rocks, uprooted trees, and hapless soldiers into hazardous shrapnel. Armed with a measure of foresight, you are able to remove yourself from the area before the storms grew more violent. Over time, nearby communities told of cyclones consisting of thousands of soldiers worth of limbs, spears, armor, and skulls. What's more, the weather showed no signs of dissipating. Several units of disfavored, who fought the enemy in spite of the advancing storm, were caught up in the Overlord's magic. The few survivors regrouped and nursed their wounds, their failure to topper, topple the Stalwart Legion shamed them into believing the dead more fortunate. The name Stalwart fell from use. People took to calling it the Blade Grave. For the remade landscape festooned with the iron and bronze or ornaments, arm armaments <laughs> of two once great legions. As Kairos' forces departed, you spared a glance back at the ruins of Stalwart, marveling at your work. You didn't have a long you didn't have long to rest before Tunan called you into service once more. Conquest is complete. You've reached the end of Kairos's conquest. Do you want to continue or erase your progress and start over? I want to continue. The year is 431, and Kairos' invasion has shattered all major opposition in the Tears. The Younger Realms, the Bastard Tier, the Free Cities. All who defied Kairos lay broken by battle, or bowed in surrender. The two armies of the Overlord, the Disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus, now control our lands. But our will is not yet extinguished. Not entirely. In the Valley of Vendrian's Well, those of us unwilling to bow to Kairos have banded together in defiance. Violating an oath of surrender from two years prior, we have staged a bloody uprising, murdering the disfavored and Scarlet Chorus garrison in a midnight assault. With their main forces spread across the tiers, the disfavored and Scarlet Chorus redeploy to Vendrian's Well to crush the resistance, but months pass with no definitive battle. As disagreement and discord paralyze the Archons, we bide our time and wait for our message of insurrection to spread across the tears. The Overlord is not amused, and Kairos has one message for the Archons. Crush the Oathbreakers or die. Kairos backs this threat with an edict, a magical commandment that can slay all in the valley should the order be ignored. The honor of proclaiming this edict fell to you. Sent across the mountains to Vendrian's Well, you carry the Overlord's edict to read before the Archons. As you finally make your way through the winding mountain passes into the valley, the ground trembles and Kairos's magic seals the way behind you. You are trapped in Vendrian's Well, with Kairos's armies and the Oathbreakers. The only way to survive is to fulfill the terms of the Overlord's Edict, in any way that you can. Fate Binder Kaladin, I presume. Alright, so we get to begin our adventure for real this time. Oh.